Hello. Well, the rising cost of living at the moment is frightening, especially if you're on a reduced income, maybe through unemployment or sickness, or maybe you're on benefits or trying to live on a pension. The problem is that if we can't get any more income, then we need to find some way of making savings. Now, our friends over at restless.co.uk have come up with a list of 19 money-saving tips and we're going to look at what we think are our top 10 of those tips. Welcome to Grey Matters. Welcome to Grey Matters, the channel that promotes the fact that the older generation still matters. We still have relevance and we also look at issues that matter to the older generation. Now, our friends over at restless.co.uk have come up with these 19 money saving tips. Before we get into them, we just want to give a big shout out. Restless.co.uk is the fastest growing online or digital community for the over 50s. Their strap line is discover more, rest less. And it's true. The website is full of things that you can, you can do. There's, there's a community page, there's dating even, there's jobs, opportunities of volunteering, help and advice on all sorts of things from money and travel health and all sorts of uh, amazing content so i'll leave a link in the description below uh, go over and pay a visit to restless.co.uk this isn't a paid promotion we genuinely think it's a really good website and you know in the meantime we'll continue bringing occasional content from them to share with you now let's look at these money saving tips we've chosen 12 we the ones we think are probably the best of the bunch. Um, and some of them might seem obvious. Uh, some of them might not be too popular with your family. But remember, a lot of these are designed to be temporary, right? To get you out of a hole, to get you out of the fix that you might currently be in. And in truth, you'll probably adopt some of them permanently. Well, number one is to start budgeting. Because it's very difficult to know how much you've got actually left to spend on things like food and other essentials, if you don't know what you're spending on your legal commitments, things like your mortgage repayments, rent, council tax, and other loan repayments. So you need to work that out so you can then see what you've got left for your food and other essentials. Now, I have a, another top tip for that to reduce the outgoings that you're spending on some of those things like food. And that's to shop for the month, not for the week. If you've got a freezer, make use of it. Shop to fill that freezer. And the thing is that if you shop by the week, you're picking up all the intermediate price increases over that time. And by the time that you've got to the end of that month, you've spent more than you needed to have done. If you shop for the month, the prices will be going up in the meantime. And when you shop for the second month, yes, the prices will be higher, but you'll have missed out the intermediate rises that will be eating into your purse. Now, the second one is, well, not very popular at all, and that's to cancel your subscriptions. Yep, streaming services, the gym, magazines, wine clubs, whatever subscriptions you've got, cancel them. Remember, it's only temporary, it's to get you over a difficult period, all right? Once you're through this, dreadful situation we've got running at the moment, you'll be able to introduce those subscriptions again as you're able to afford them. Number three is to try and reduce your council tax commitment. Now you can get into a lot of hot water if you don't pay your council tax, but there's nothing to stop you trying to reduce your commitment to it. For example, if you're the only adult living in a property, you can claim up to 25% discount on that. You can also sometimes get discount if you're living on your own or if you're a carer. Even if you don't qualify, it's still worth asking the council if they'll give you a payment holiday for one or two months. Anything really to help ease that burden on you. Now, Restless's tip number four is 
to try and reduce uh, your car insurance commitment. And I would add on to that home insurance, travel insurance, any other insurances you've got. And the secret to that is not just to blindly auto renew because most policies have a tendency to increase their premiums year on year on. And if you just let them auto renew, you're definitely going to be paying more than you need to. So use the comparison sites. Bear in mind though that there are some companies that don't take part in these comparison websites, uh, such as Aviva and Direct Line. So you need to contact them directly to get a quote. Number five is to switch to own brands. Now, okay, I know there are a lot of people out there that, that won't do that. They don't think the own brands are as good a quality. They don't taste as nice. But you know, some of them are good, if not better in taste and quality. And if ever there was a time to try own brands, it's now. So give it a go. You may be converted to some of these products against their branded products, against their branded counterparts, uh, and you might be converted for life. Research has shown that if you shop around with own brands, you can save up to £240 a year. Uh, that's got to be a saving worth having. Tip number six is to use apps to reduce, to reduce what you're spending on food. Now, there are a couple of apps such as Too Good To Go and Olio. Now, Too Good To Go partners with high street stores such as Costas and Marks and & Spencers and Greggs and people like that. Um, and at the end of the day, they create what they call magic boxes. Uh, and this is food that they won't be able to sell the next day. And for a three to four to five pounds, depending on the deal, you can reserve a magic box, which you pick up at a prearranged time. And the value in those boxes is usually at least 10, 12, 15 pounds. Um, the first time we did that, we did a Marks and Spencer's box for four pounds, and it contained a 12 pound banquet Indian meal for two and some cakes. So, you know, pretty good value. So give that a look. Olio, on the other hand, brings communities together so they can share produce and toys and books and makeup and things that otherwise might go to waste. So give those a look, see what you think, all right? Leave a link down in the description. Now, number seven is your mortgage. Almost certainly your biggest monthly outgoing. And if you're on your current lender's um, standard variable rate, you, you're almost guaranteed that you can bring that monthly cost down. Now, the Restless website has got a mortgage comparison checker. Okay, I'll leave a link in the description below. Pop over there, have a look, see what your options are, because you could make some substantial savings on your mortgage. My personal top tip to add to that is to uh, switch your credit cards about. If you've got a substantial balance on one of your credit cards, find yourself a balance transfer card. There's some really good deals now with up to three years to pay. And it's interest free for that three years. And instead of paying your huge repayment each month, which could be 60, 70, 80 pounds, I don't know, depends on your balance, most of which is made up of interest and a tiny bit coming off the capital, that monthly repayment goes up each month until you get to the stage that you just can't afford it. If you go onto a, um, a balance transfer card, you could end up paying six pounds, seven pounds, whatever the minimum repayment is for three years, interest free. And that will get you out of a, a hole for the time being. And just remember to switch to another balance transfer card before the current one finishes. And that way you won't end up with a period where suddenly you're paying the credit card's full repayment rate. I've got a top tip number two on this. If you're looking for cheaper personal loans, again, not a paid promotion, but we've used this company. It's called Zopa or Zopa, Z-O-P-A. Now these loans are actually crowdfunded. Hundreds and hundreds of, of ordinary people investing some of their savings. There's businesses putting lots of money in and each loan that is taken out is crowdfunded by hundreds of these investors. So if you take out a thousand pounds, you could be taking just a pound off each investor. Uh, you just pay your repayments and Zopa, Zopa, um, then pay the money on to those people that lent the money 
And it's actually not a bad thing if you've got a bit of spare cash, maybe one day, consider um, being one of the lenders on Zucker. You can get all the information on their website, but their interest rates when you borrow are pretty good and there's absolutely no early repayment charges. Uh, and we've had several loans off them. They're very reasonable and we've always paid them off early with no uh, penalties at all. As always, with um, any financial um, matters, do seek independent financial advice. We're not financial experts by any means. Number eight is to cut your energy consumption and your costs. Now, if we're talking about uh, gas, I recently posted a video about cutting your energy costs uh, and there's a lot of gas saving tips there, particularly relevant during winter uh, when you can make the best savings on that. So for electricity, there are a lot of tried and tested uh, little tricks you can do. Obviously, turning off lights in rooms that you're not in. And you know what the kids are like? They go around the house switching the lights on and you go around switching them off. Keep doing that. All right, if you're not in a room, turn the lights off. Showers. If you've got an electric shower, use it for a minute less a day and that will save you about £4 a year. Doesn't sound much. But what if you cut that showering time you normally have in half? And if the family did the same, you're going to soon start making some decent savings on that. Dishwashers, washing machines, use them on the eco cycles. If you've got a night rate, use them at night when it's cheaper. And dishwashers, I mean restless, suggest you only use them once a week. What's wrong with hand washing up? Use them on the Sunday when you've got the Sunday lunch to, uh, to clear up. I can see a good use for dishwasher then. So try and cut down your actual usage of these items. That'll save you money. Number nine is to make your food go further. Believe it or not, but UK families, average families, waste 4.5 billion tonnes of food that never gets eaten. That's 14, let me get this right, 14 billion pounds a year. That's equivalent to 700 pounds a year for every average person household family in the UK today. You are throwing away £700 worth of food a year. That money would be better in your pocket than in the dustbin. Now the best way to save that food is to actually do a meal planner. Now again tedious, maybe boring, a bit too much effort, but the fact is if you plan a meal or all your meals for the week you only buy for that meal plan. You buy the quantities you need for the number of people you're feeding. You start saving money immediately. Now Restless have got a free downloadable meal planner to help you get started. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below. There's also a website called Cooking on a Bootstrap. And that's lo loads of advice on avoiding food wastage. It's got recipes and all sorts of things on there. And again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Tip number 10. If you're shopping online, and I'm sure some of you do this already, but look for the discount codes. My Voucher Codes and Groupon are two of the biggest voucher websites there. I'll leave a link in the descriptions for you. And basically, you hunt there for the discounts. You look for the store you want to buy from. Um, see if they've got any um, voucher codes. You could save on delivery, you could save on the products. It's always worth doing. And I've got another top tip of my own for this. If you are in the emergency services, or if you've ever been in the emergency services, check out the blue light card because you'll get a lot of discounts on some major high street stores and branding. Okay, another top tip for you. Tip number 11 is to look for cashbacks. When you're shopping online, if you know what you want and where you want to get it, go to a site like Quidco or Top Cashback. Search for the site on there or the shop, see if they're affiliated with them, and you will then get money back for every purchase you make. Now, now Top Cashback reckon that their members get an average of £325 a year in cashbacks. And I've got a friend who uses Quidco who is getting masses of money come back by using um, th these cashback schemes. So give that a thought, well worth it. 
And I'll leave uh, links to Quidco and Top Cashback in the description below. And number 12 is to reduce motoring costs. Petrol prices, diesel prices are horrendous at the moment. They're, they're completely off the scale. We've never seen anything like this. But it's not just affecting us at the pumps. It's affecting everything um, from deliveries for foodstuffs, and, which is why prices generally have been driven up. Uh, pardon the pun. But if you're going to um, try and save on fuel, probably the best way to do it is to get the petrol prices app. Now, this app um, searches all the petrol prices in your area and gives you a whole list of the prices at every station. You can choose the cheapest and head there to, to get your fuel from there. And petrolprices.com, who own the app, say that you could save as much as £220 a year by using that app. That's got to be worth having. And currently, that's probably a lot more than that. Now, a couple of personal top tips on reducing motoring costs. If you have um, a, live MG, M, a live MPG readout in your car, miles per gallon, use it. And when you hit your cruising speed, whether it's 30, 40 or 50 miles an hour, ease your right foot off that accelerator a bit. You'll hear the engine note change. You shouldn't expect, uh, affect your speed, but you watch your MPG rocket and you'll start getting a lot better mileage out of each tank of fuel. And it's the same when you're on a motorway or dual carriageway. When you get up to your cruising speed, take your foot off slightly, it won't affect your speed, but you'll start saving money. And of course, a better way on a dual carriageway or motorway, just drop, drop your speed down by 10 miles an hour from your normal cruising speed. If you're normally batting along at 70, drop it down to 60. The difference in the time of your journey is negligible, I promise you but you will start saving money. So that's it. Those are the top 12 money-saving tips from Restless. There's actually 19 on their website, so do go over and check out them all, okay? It's well worth it, I promise you. Please leave your comments below if you like those tips, if you don't like them, or if you've got money-saving tips of your own. Really like to hear them, and I'll share them with Restless as well. Maybe they can use them in the future. Um, we've got lots more content coming your way. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Grey Matters. Bye for now.